The soldiers you will see tonight from the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, and the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone, represent America's Army in thousands of performances annually. They are part of the United States Army, Military District of Washington, and serve as guardians of the nation's capital. Please welcome the United States Army Blues under the direction of Chief Warrant Officer Benjamin McMillan and vocalists from the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone. Oh, All right, you guys ready to have some fun? Oh, well, my friends, the time has come. Yeah, to raise the roof and have some fun. Throw away any work to be done. Let the music play on, play on, play on. Everybody sing, everybody dance. Come on. Lose yourself in wild romance. We're going to party, caramo, fiesta, forever. Come on and sing it along. We're going to party, caramo, fiesta, Forever, oh, come on and sing my song all night long, all night, all night, all night. All Life is cool, wild and sweet. Yeah, let the music play on, play on, play on. Feel it in your heart and feel it in your soul. Let the music take control. We're going to party, caramel, fiesta, forever. Oh, come on and sing my song. Sammy Moya. Hey, Jumbo Jumbo, we can party or we go. Oh, Jumbo like, Jumbo little Sammy Moya. Hey, Jumbo Jumbo. Don't 
clock strikes upon the hour and the sun begins to fade still enough time to figure out how to chase my blues away At this time, we are pleased to recognize the special groups attending this evening's performance, the 4-H Conference. Adelante Dual Language Academy, Rusk Junior High School from San Jose, California. Boundary County Middle School, Kellogg Middle School, Dunlap Elementary School from Bonners Ferry, Idaho. Karen DeLay Catholic School from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Echo 2022 Trip to DC from Echo, Oregon. Ernst
Ernst and Young from Tysons, Virginia. Gila River Indian Community Honor Students from Sacaton, Arizona. Golden Valley District from Madera, California. Government Appellate Division of the United States Army Legal Services Agency from Fort Belvoir, Virginia. Kenilworth Junior High School from Pentaluma, California. Monticello Middle School, Mrs. Tolls DC Trip, Oak Creek Intermediate School from Monticello, Iowa. <coughs> Mount Dora High School, Air Force, JORTC from Mount Dora, Florida. Rancho San Justo Middle School from Hollister, California. Rim of the World Middle School from Lake Arrowhead, California. Riverview Middle School from Plymouth, Wisconsin. Somerset Middle School from Somerset, Wisconsin. Troop Command Walter Reed National Military Medical Center from Bethesda, Maryland. United States Army Signal Activity for Fort Belvoir from Fort Belvoir, Virginia. Valley View Middle Slash High School from Archbald, Pennsylvania. Virginia District UPCI Bible Quizzing Program. Weimer Hills Junior High School from Weimer, California. Wells Middle School from Dublin, California. John Sutter Middle School from Fowler, California. As a reminder, blank ammunition will be fired from some of the weapons this evening, so please be prepared to cover your ears if you or your children are sensitive to loud noises. This evening's Twilight Tattoo was hosted by the 25th Secretary of the Army, the Honorable Christine E. Warmoth, the 40th Chief of Staff of the Army, General James C. McConville, and Sergeant Major Charles W. Albertson, representing the Sergeant Major of the Army. For 247 years, the United States Army has proudly served our nation with distinction, safeguarding our communities and defending freedom wherever it is threatened. This week, we celebrate the birthday of America's oldest national institution and honor the accomplishments of all our heroes, past and present. Since its establishment on June 14, 1775, America's Army has played a vital role in the growth and development of the nation. United States Army soldiers and civilians embody the American values of loyalty, duty, respect, honor, integrity, and personal courage. As proof, look no further than the lineage of heroes from the American Revolution to today. The American soldier is trained and ready mentally and physically fit, and possesses the determined spirit of the American people. Our soldiers, America's sons and daughters, have not hesitated to respond to the nation's call. This past year, our soldiers and civilians have protected the nation from threats around the world and assisted with the evacuation and resettlement of thousands of Afghan refugees while supporting the fight against the coronavirus and providing aid to Americans from hurricanes and wildfires. It is truly a privilege to serve with the greatest soldiers in the world. The American Paratrooper, born of fire in the skies of World War II, more than 70 years ago, has since struck fear and terror into the hearts of those foolish enough to oppose them. Relentless in their skill and courage, not only in the air, but also on the ground, these brave soldiers have forged for themselves a place of honor in America's hearts. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Staff Sergeant Gabriel Colon, originally from Fountain, Colorado. It has been my proud honor to describe for you today a demonstration of precision freefall as performed by members of your 
United States Army Parachute Team, the Golden Knights. At this time, members of the Black Demonstration Team are circling high overhead and are distinctively painted C-147 aircraft at an altitude of 5,000 feet. The jump master is looking out the left door of the aircraft. His head is outside the wind and cold. Through a series of hand and arm signals, he is relaying heading corrections to the pilot, maneuvering the aircraft to a precise exit point for the jumpers. Watch closely, as you may see the nose of the aircraft move slightly left or right in response to the steering instruction. The demonstration you're about to see was designed to showcase the maneuverability of the human body while flying through the air at speeds in excess of 120 miles per hour. The jumpers are out and the smoke is on! As the team leader takes his heading in this direction, the remaining jumpers glide to precise opening points and await his signal. And there you have the high-flying black and gold of your United States Army Parachute Team, the Golden Knight. Now, as you may have guessed, these jumpers are faced with a unique situation, a traffic jam in the sky. They must gain vertical separation in order to allow for individual approaches into the target area. This is accomplished by pulling down on the front part of the parachute and spiraling down at speeds in excess of 60 miles per hour. This allows the jumpers to set up a traffic pattern, just like you might see aircraft at a busy airport. The parachutes used by the Golden Knights are flexible wing gliders constructed of lightweight ripstop nylon. These parachutes have an inherent forward airspeed of 22 miles per hour. To turn left, the jumper pulls down on the left steering line. To turn right, the jumper simply pulls down on the right steering line. And as they near the ground, they'll pull down on both steering lines simultaneously for the safest and softest possible land. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise as the team leader of the Black Demonstration Team, Sergeant First Class Morgan George, brings it into the landing area for a beautiful on-target landing. Moments ago, these jumpers were merely two miles overhead. Thanks in part to the advanced aerodynamic design of these Ram Air parachutes, the jumper is able to overcome the variability of the wind and land in such a small target area. Staff Sergeant Jason Bowder from Aurora, Colorado, with a good save. Our next jumper, Staff Sergeant Benjamin Hall from Walhalla, South Carolina, flying the Army flag. Bringing it in for a beautiful on-target landing. The United States Army Parachute Team was formed in 1959 at the home of the airport, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. At the time, the team consisted of 19 original members. Each was selected to assist in the development of modern parachuting techniques to provide world-class competition parachutists and to perform live aerial demonstrations in support of Army public relations. In 1961, we are designated the Army's official aerial demonstration unit. And one year later, we adopted our nickname, the Golden Knights. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our performance for the day. And on behalf of the entire team, I would like to thank each and every one of you for being such a warm and receptive airborne audience. In closing, In closing, I leave you with this final thought. In the future, may all your days be prosperous and your nights golden. Let's hear it one more time for the soldiers of the United States Army Parachute Team.
Following in the footsteps of past generations, tonight we are privileged to induct the next generation of American soldiers into our nation's army. Before you taking the field are 20 outstanding young Americans who have volunteered to serve in the United States Army. Administering the oath of enlistment this evening is the 40th Chief of Staff of the United States Army, General James C. McConville. Well, well good, well, good evening, and uh, how about those golden knights? American paratroopers, American soldiers, they represent the best of the Army in the world, and, and this week is the Army birthday celebration. of dedicated service to the nation, protecting around the world. And the soldiers you saw jumping in today, and the soldiers you'll see during this event represent the very, very best of the United States. Very shortly, I will enlist new soldiers who have raised their right hand during a time of conflict and said, send me. So we are very, very proud to have them join the Army. We are hiring right now for anyone else that, that's interested. So let's go ahead and get on with this thing. We're proud to be in the Army. We're proud to have you join us. Thank you. OK, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me according to regulations in the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. Congratulations and proud to have you in the Army. Thank you. Raise your hand. Okay, well done. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in welcoming the United States Army's newest soldiers. The United States Army welcomes you to Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall in this evening's special Army birthday performance of Twilight Tattoo. Now taking the field are soldiers of your United States Army. Please stand and join us in singing the Army Song. March along, sing our song with the army of the free. Comes the brave, comes the true, who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might. And the army goes forward. Please be seated.
The commander of troops this evening is Lieutenant Colonel Michael R. Thompson, commander, 4th Battalion, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. Ladies and gentlemen, our hosts for this evening's performance are the Secretary of the Army, Honorable Christine Warmouth, the Chief of Staff of the Army, General James C. McConville, and Sergeant Major Charles W. Albertson, representing the Sergeant Major of the Army. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as honors are rendered. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to have special guests for tonight's ceremony. The Honorable Christine E. Warmouth and Mr. Andrew Kipper, Secretary of the Army. General and Mrs. James C. McConville, Chief of Staff of the Army. Sergeant Major Charles W. Albertson, representing Sergeant Major of the Army Michael A. Grinston, Executive Officer to the Sergeant Major of the Army. Miss Alexandra Grinston, spouse of the Sergeant Major of the Army, Michael A. Grinston. General Retired and Mrs. Eric Shinseki, 7th Secretary of Veterans Affairs, Chairman, Army Historical Foundation. The Honorable Michael McCord, Under Secretary of Defense for Comptroller and Chief Financial Officer. The Honorable Gilbert Sinceros, Jr., Under Secretary of Defense for Personnel and Readiness. <laughs> Ms. Silene Mullen, Acting Assistant Secretary of Defense for Health Affairs. <laughs> General and Mrs. Joseph M. Martin, Vice Chief of Staff of the Army. General and Mrs. David D. Thompson, Vice Chief of Space Operations. 
Admiral Steve D. Poulin, Vice Commandant of the Coast Guard. The Honorable Carl E. Spangler, Assistant Secretary of the Army, Financial Management and Comptroller. Miss Yvette K. Busico, Acting Assistant Secretary of the Army, Manpower and Reserve Affairs. Miss Veronica Valdez, Special Assistant to the Secretary of Defense for White House Liaison. Mr. Matthew Williams, performing the duties of the Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Legislative Affairs. Mr. and Mrs. Samuel Brannan, Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Plans and Posture. <laughs> Lieutenant General and Mrs. Walter E. Pyatt, Director of the Army Staff. <laughs> Mr. Mario Diaz, Deputy Undersecretary of the Army. Chief Foreign Officer 5, Yolandria S. Dixon Carter, Assistant Executive Officer and Senior Warrant Officer Advisor to the 40th Chief of Staff of the Army. And we are pleased to have Congressional staff members from the offices of Senator Catherine Cortez Masto. And Representative Chrissy Houlihan. Thank you for sharing your evening with us. Once again, welcome to Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall in this evening's special performance of Twilight Tattoo, Army Strong! The origin of American military music can be traced to the fifers and drummers of the Revolutionary War. This musical heritage is represented today by the soldiers of the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps. The soldiers of the Fife and Drum Corps wear uniforms patterned after those of General Washington's Continental Army. In order to be easily identified, military musicians wore the reverse colors of the regiment to which they were assigned. At that time, American infantry soldiers wore blue coats with red facings. Thus, the musicians wore red coats with blue facings. The active duty musicians of today's Fife and Drum Corps honor the soldiers of the past while displaying the discipline, professionalism, and precision of today's army to audiences around the globe.
For over 200 years, our nation's army has been committed to upholding the United States Constitution and defending the values, traditions, and liberties that define us as a nation. We as an army stand today on the shoulders of giants who fought so bravely for our country. As they conclude their program, the Corps honors the legacy and the continued vigilance of today's soldier with the Corps' signature melody and troop step. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps. <laughs> On the evening of April 18th, 1775, Dispatch riders from Boston rode out to alert the Minutemen of the march of British Army soldiers, known as regulars or redcoats, to Lexington and Concord. One of them, silversmith, artist, and patriot Paul Revere, was later immortalized in Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's 1861 poem with the words, Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. To arms, to arms, the regulars are out! To arms, to arms, the regulars are out! 
The American Revolution was our eight-year-long struggle for independence. The conflict witnessed the birth of our nation's army on 14 June 1775. Though the raw militia units that comprised that force were severely tested in the early years of the revolution, under the leadership of General George Washington, a professional American army emerged from the trials and tribulations of Valley Forge as a trained, battle-tested, and highly organized fighting force. Sound assembly. To the front, march. Make ready. Take aim. Fire. Advance, far locks. To the front, march. March. Charge bayonets. Less than a generation after the American Revolution, the Army was again called upon to defend our hard-won liberties and national sovereignty in the War of 1812. In battles that raged from Canada to the Gulf of Mexico, American soldiers endured and persevered. As our nation's capital and the entire Chesapeake region was threatened in the summer of 1814, a small force of soldiers and militia held out against an invading British army and fleet at a small post near Baltimore, Maryland. Make ready! Take aim! Fire! Advance! under constant attack for the last two days. The enemy has pressed us hard and they've been shelling Fort McHenry almost non-stop. But the men endure the horrors of battle and the bombardment like veterans. The courage and strength of the regular soldiers and militia remains unbroken, despite the hardships. We have a bond, we trust each other and our officers, and we know we will prevail. This morning at dawn, the force commander ordered an enormous flag to be raised to show the enemy that we will not be defeated. They say it can be seen for miles. That flag is our nation's symbol, our badge of honor, and it will not be lowered for this or any foe. Over 200 years ago, our national anthem was born as Francis Scott Key observed our glorious flag flying over the ramparts at Fort McHenry the morning after the battle. Please rise and join in singing the Star Spangled Banner. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs burned. Sting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave or oh, the land of the free and the 
please be seated. Throughout the 20th century, America began to rapidly expand its borders. President Jefferson's negotiation of the Louisiana Purchase in 1803 had doubled the size of the young nation and the United States Army's Corps of Discovery, led by Army Captains Meriwether Lewis and William Clark, explored these vast new lands. Tens of thousands of Americans followed trails that stretched from St. Louis, Missouri to Oregon, California, and New Mexico. Army engineers and soldiers spearheaded expeditions that explored and mapped this great land from the Mississippi River to the Rocky Mountains, Grand Canyon, and Pacific Northwest. Through the ravages of the American Civil War and the building of the Transcontinental Railroad that connected the nation from coast to coast, the Army was able to transform itself to respond to the ever-changing needs of the nation. America's small frontier army would evolve into a larger and more complex fighting force that first appeared on the world stage in the Spanish-American War. Then, in 1917, the army was called upon to deploy massive formations overseas to defeat the armies of the German Kaiser in World War I. One of the most decorated units to emerge from World War I was the 369th Infantry Regiment, known as the Harlem Hellfighters. The regiment was composed largely of African-American soldiers from New York. Originally an Army National Guard unit, these soldiers had overcome many challenges to join the ranks of the American Expeditionary Force that deployed to France under General John Pershing. Private Henry Johnson, one of America's great heroes of the conflict, was a member of this proud, capable, and hard-fighting unit. The French said that what I did was heroic, or brave. Oh, they even gave me this medal. But I tell you, I only did what I had to do. You see, Roberts and I were standing sentry in no man's land of northern France this past May. In the wee hours of the morning, we thought we heard wire cutters. And before we knew it, a hell of bullets came our way. We gave it right back to them. We unloaded our rifles and went after them with grenades. We both got hit, but Roberts went down and I just kept going. I wanted to see two Germans taking him away. I turned my rifle around and I clubbed two Germans who were on top of me. I pushed through my bowler knife, got Roberts back, and continued for the enemy. Reinforcements finally came and the Germans retreated, but not without paying a heavy price. Last week, when the French awarded us the Croix de Guerre, all I thought was that I was proud we had done something to advance freedom. This time it wasn't as labormen, but as true American soldiers. Throughout the 20th century, American soldiers fought side by side with our allies to achieve victory over there. Over there, over there, send the word, send the word over there that the Yanks are coming, the Yanks are coming, the drums are um tumming everywhere. So prepare, say a prayer, send the word, send the word to beware. We'll be over, we're coming over, and we won't come back. It's over, over there. Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. Take it on the run, on the run, on the run. Hear them calling you and me, every son of liberty. Hurry right away, no delay, go today. Make your daddy glad to have had such a lad. Tell your sweetheart not to pine, to be glad her boy's in line. Over there, over there, send the word, send the word over there. That the Yanks 
are coming, the aches are coming, the drums rum tum in everywhere. So prepare, say a prayer, send the word, send the word to beware. We'll be over, we're coming over, and we won't come back till it's over, over there. The world one has also been called the war to end all wars less than a generation later the forces of tyranny and oppression again threatened our country and her allies with the outbreak of the second world war after the japanese bombing of pearl harbor on december 7th 1941 american forces waged campaigns in the european and pacific theaters soldiers fought from the deserts of north africa to the beaches of normandy the jungles of new guinea and the philippines when general macarthur said i shall return back in 42 victory in the pacific sure seemed a long way off but just this past year, my division, the 77th Infantry, has helped take back Guam, the Philippines, and now Okinawa. My brother hit Omaha Beach in France last year with the 1st Infantry Division. And word is, the Nazis are going to surrender soon, and the war in Europe will be over. I sure hope victory ain't too far off either. I'm ready for the fight to end so I can get back to my wife, kids, and the life I had left behind. Back on the home front, the country came together to support our troops. With most men shipping out, more than six million American women stepped up and met the new challenges. America became the arsenal of democracy, and millions of Americans were needed to keep the troops supplied. They worked in factories and workshops across the country, producing tanks, artillery, vehicles, and aircraft. Not only did women help build the planes, they flew them to where they were needed as members of the Women Air Force Service Pilot Program, the WASPs. In 1941, I was a civilian pilot instructor in Hawaii when I witnessed the attacks on Pearl Harbor from the flight deck of my plane. Watching that event moved me to join the WASPs when they formed a year later. In total, we flew over 60 million miles, transporting cargo, laying smoke, and towing aerial targets. We handled every type of military aircraft available at the time, and nothing makes me prouder than knowing I used one of my greatest talents in service to my country. In 2010, the WASP were recognized for invaluable service to the nation with a Congressional Gold Medal. Today, women now serve in all positions within the Army and are integral members of the team. America declared victory in Europe and Japan, VE and VJ days in 1945, and Americans looked forward to what they hoped would be a period of peace and prosperity. But the world order continued to change. The peace that so many had fought and died for in World War II lasted just a few short years. In June 1950, the Cold War turned hot as American forces joined with the United Nations to resist communist aggression in Korea. The army that deployed to Korea had begun to transform to look more like the nation it served. The desegregation of the armed forces by President Truman in 1948 created integrated units that fought at places like Heartbreak Ridge, Porkchop Hill, and Sandbag Castle. The foreign armistice, which continues to this day, was signed and the fighting came to an end. I fought across Europe against the Nazis in World War II. I never thought I'd be back on active duty again, but here I am on Porkchop Hill fighting commies. We've been ordered to hold this position at all costs. Sort of a message to the enemy, no matter how many assaults they launch, we won't budge. In a faraway land, these soldiers I lead are given everything to fight off communist aggression. Like me, many fought in the last war. They are brave and the very best. We hope that the sacrifices we are making will give the people of South Korea a chance at lasting peace and allow them to rebuild their nation as they want to. 
Korea is sometimes called the Forgotten War, but the heroic efforts of American service members fighting side by side with our Korean and United Nations allies enabled South Korea to build the thriving democracy they have today. Less than a decade after the armistice in Korea, the army was once again called upon to confront our nation's enemies, this time in Southeast Asia. As the army entered Vietnam, it implemented innovative concepts that transformed warfare and medical treatment operations. Helicopter gunships mounted with machine guns and rockets rapidly delivered air assault troops to the battlefield where they could be supported by tactical air and artillery support. These helicopter units revolutionized medical first responder capabilities on the battlefield and beyond. Helicopter medical evacuations, known as dust-offs, pioneered life-saving techniques that remain the benchmark in both military and civilian emergency medical care today. At the heart of all these innovations was the American soldier. I'm Sergeant Robert L. Howard, and I'm on my third tour here in Vietnam. I couldn't wait to enlist in the Army and become a Green Beret. To be a part of the best of the best was all I ever dreamed of as a kid. My A-team has done everything from providing medical care to villagers up in the Central Highlands to advising and fighting alongside the Vietnamese. Once my team was attacked by enemy forces three times our size, my platoon leader was badly wounded and pinned down, so I crawled through enemy fire and pulled him out. Even though I was wounded too, I made sure my entire team got back to safety before I left the battlefield. They gave me the Medal of Honor for my actions, but I didn't do it for hopes of an award. I did it because I care about my team and because what we're doing here in Vietnam is important. I volunteered to be an army nurse right out of college. Here in Vietnam, we work 12 hour shifts, six days a week. And this is the hardest work I've done in my life. Every day, we see about a dozen soldiers come through our field hospital, and we do everything we can to help them heal. We're saving lives on the front line and performing procedures back home only doctors can do. Even on my days off, I go back to the hospital and try to comfort the wounded as best I can. My friends back home don't understand, but I know what I'm doing here is my calling. Not just as a nurse, but as a U.S. Army soldier and to support my country however I can. We soldiers are trusted professionals and our nation's greatest military asset. We answered America's call to duty and served with honor and selfless service. All right, everybody, get up on your feet. I know you heard me. Get up on your feet. Thank you. I'm looking on, at y'all. You got to know how to pony like Pony Moroni. Your backbone slip. Do the what to say, like my little Lucy. Oh! All right, y'all. I need you to listen to me and follow along. Ready? Na 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 na
The men and women of our army fought in incredibly challenging conditions in Vietnam, but never wavered in their courage and commitment to the nation and each other. As we emerged from conflict in Southeast Asia, the world was changing in many ways. We asked ourselves, as the world evolves, how do we need to evolve to meet new challenges? The Army went to work on changes to our doctrine, equipment, organizations, personnel systems, and how we trained our professional soldiers. The revolutions in training and doctrine in the post-Vietnam era, as well as the movement from the draft to an all-volunteer force, transformed the United States Army. Realistic, demanding training, along with inspired, visionary leadership, is the bedrock of the Army profession. The Army instills individual and collective excellence, a commitment to a strong personal and team ethic, and set of professional values. All this is represented in the soldiers of the United States Army Drill Team. The secret to our Army's success was is and continues to be unit cohesion and trust. Nowhere is that more evident than in the drill team. Members of the drill team are from all corners of the United States with a wide range of career fields. They have perfected their skills and are here to share them with you today. Ladies and gentlemen, your United States Army Drill Team! Today, the drill team is commended by Sergeant First Class Jonathan Chappelle from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The drill team represents today's soldiers as well as yesterday's heroes who proudly fought in our nation's wars and continue to serve around the world.
The total army must be ready for today, modernized for tomorrow, and strengthened by close relationships with our allies and partners. Like the drill team, we build cohesive teams that are highly trained, disciplined, and fit, who are ready to fight and win in any environment. We sustain a culture of respect, trust, and discipline where everyone takes care of each other. And now, the most difficult maneuver of all. The soldiers will continue to march as members from the front rank toss their rifle into the air over the formation to be caught by the soldiers in the rear rank. This is again an exercise in trust, as team members will have to put their safety in the hands of their fellow soldiers. This is the United States Army Drill Team's signature maneuver since 1958, the front to rear overhead rifle toss! Once again, the ambassadors for today's army, yesterday's heroes, and tomorrow's soldiers, our United States Army Drill Team! After Vietnam, the integration of technology, planning, training, equipment, and leadership set the foundation for victory over the next three decades. 
It helped to bring about victory in the Cold War with the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 and the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. American soldiers also served with distinction in places like Granada, Panama, Somalia, Haiti, and the Balkans. No other nation on the face of the earth could compete as America developed weapons like the Big Five, the Abrams tank, the Bradley fighting vehicle, the Apache and Black Hawk helicopters, and the Patriot missile. The first major conflict for the United States in the post-Vietnam era presented itself in August 1990 when Saddam Hussein ordered his armies to invade Kuwait. This was no ordinary act of aggression. Iraq's army, the fourth largest in the world, the vaunted Republican Guard, were well equipped and battle tested after an eight year war with Iran. Still in just 100 hours of ground combat, the US Army and our allies achieved a stunning victory over enemies, liberating Kuwait and demonstrating the dedication, professionalism, and high level of training of our soldiers. Added to the history books were victories such as the Battle of Medina Ridge, the Battle of Wada Albatine, the Battle of 73 Easting, the largest tank battle fought by American forces since World War II. America rallied behind its soldiers and their families as we achieved victory in the Gulf War. This spirit was captured in a memorable song of the era. <laughs> If tomorrow all the things were gone, I'd work for all my life. And I had to start again with just my family by my side. I thank my lucky stars to be living here today. Cause the plaque still stands for freedom and they can't take that away. American, where at least I know I'm free, and I won't forget the ones who died who gave that right to me, and I gladly stand up next to you and defend her seal today, cause there ain't no doubt I love this land, God bless the USA. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, Detroit down to Houston, and New York to LA, well there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say. Army responded immediately to the 9-11 terrorist attacks, drawing up plans to send special forces teams to Afghanistan as part of an unconventional mission known as Task Force Dagger. American soldiers working in partnership with United States airmen and the Afghan enemies of the Taliban, known as the Northern Alliance, struck quickly, adapting as needed to engage in a new type of conflict. 
Their ability to adapt, tactically, operationally, and strategically, was a testament to their commitment, expertise, and professional excellence. I'm Captain Mark Nooch, commander of the 5th Special Forces Group Operational Detachment, Alpha 595. We were one of the first Special Forces teams ready for deployment, told to start planning and to be prepared to use indigenous animals for transportation. I led an experienced team of soldiers who have served in Somalia, Bosnia, or their first Gulf War. But we never imagined we'd be riding horses into combat. Once we arrived in Afghanistan on 19 October 2001, we had a lot to learn. My men adapted well. The horses give us the flexibility to get in, around, and behind the enemy to cut them off from reinforcement and retreat. The U.S. Army hasn't fielded a cavalry unit on horseback since World War II, but here we are riding side, with, side by side with our Afghan allies. In this fight, adaptability and resilience mattered most. From the mountains of Afghanistan to the deserts of Iraq, where the army waged war on terrorism by toppling a dictator and enabling the opportunity for democracy, the American soldier demonstrated incredible versatility, perseverance, courage, and teamwork. Today's Army is committed to innovation and new ways of operating in an uncertain world. Strategic partnerships with industry and academic institutions, as well as with our sister services and allies around the globe, are propelling advancements in data-centric operations and resiliency in the face of climate change. As long as we continue to innovate, modernize, and put our people first, we will remain the unrivaled world leader in ground combat operations and continue to redefine what it means to bring the fight to the enemy in 2035 and beyond in all domain operations. Our Army remains focused on a culture of commitment, competence, character, and caring. Here, we support a professional environment where everyone can thrive and excel as far as our talents can take them, both as an individual and as a team. The Army's 150 unique career fields and eight broad specialty areas highlights the growing numbers of opportunities for Army recruits. The Army is its people. People are the Army's greatest strength and most important indicator of our readiness. People mean soldiers in the regular Army, National Guard, Army Reserve, Army families and Army civilians, as well as veterans and retirees who remain soldiers for life and part of the Army family. It takes people from all walks of life, serving in many different ways, to remain the world's premier land fighting force. My name is Staff Sergeant Dante Gray from Los Angeles, California, and I serve as an infantry soldier. I am Specialist Max Hoslett from Lemoore, California, and I serve as a search and rescue soldier. My name is Specialist Logan Bostrom from Muskegon, Michigan, and I serve as a cyber specialist. My name is Specialist Harding from Fort Charlotte, Florida, and I serve as an Army medic. My name is Sergeant Tatterson from Beaufort, South Carolina. I am Military Police K-9, and this is my military working dog, Fargo. We need warriors from all backgrounds, talents, and geographies to sustain the all-volunteer force and enhance the future of our Army to win the next fight. With the joint forces, our partners and allies, and the unwavering support of you, the American people, we will thrive to remain the nation's first line of defense for another 247 years. I'm just trying to be a father, raise a daughter and a son. 
Be a lover to their mother, everything to everyone. Up and at em, bright and early, I'm all business in my suit. Yeah, I'm dressed up for success, from my head down to my boots. And I don't do it for the money, there's bills that I can't pay. I don't do it for the glory, I just do it anyway. Providing for our future, it's my responsibility. Yeah, I'm real good under pressure, being all that I can be. And I can't call in sick on Monday when the weekend's been too strong. I just work straight through the holidays, sometimes all night long. When you know that I'll stand ready When the wolf growls at the door Hey, I'm solid, hey, yes, I'm steady Yeah, I'm true down to the core And I will always do my duty No matter what the price I've counted up the cost I know the sacrifice Oh, and I don't want to die for you But if dying's asked of me with honor, cause freedom don't come free, I'm an American soldier, an American, beside my brothers and my sisters, I will gladly take a stand, when liberty is in jeopardy, I will always do what's right, I'm out here on the front line, sleep in peace tonight. field are elements of your United States Army. It has been a pleasure for the United States Army to present Twilight Tattoo. Thank you for coming out to celebrate the Army's 247th birthday and honor the selfless service of American soldiers, past and present. Our soldiers will remain on the field to speak with you and pose for photographs. Enjoy the rest of your evening. People first, winning matters, Army strong! <laughs>